So last week, I showed you how to make this animation with a child of constraint. This week, however, we're going to be taking a look at the dynamic parent add-on, which is an add-on suggested by you guys, and apparently it makes constraining a lot easier and a lot faster and simpler. And so we're going to be using the dynamic add-on to throw the two anime ball rig from one hand to the other in this video. Now your comments are golden and you guys left a lot of good questions, tips and suggestions in the last video comment section. So I just want you to know that I listen and I'm addressing them in this video. So keep them coming. Let's hop in. All right, kids. So before we actually cover the add-on, I'd like to address a comment we got from Everton Schneider. In the last video, they said that we don't actually have to go through saving the visual position process before turning off the influence. Instead, once you're ready to turn off your constraint and you want to keep the position in space, you can just press X beside the influence and set keys on the attributes. And this cuts down the process by a lot of clicks. So awesome tip. Um, this is what it means. So for the previous video, uh, at this point where the gun actually unconstrains from the hand, what I did was I went to object, apply visual transform, and then I set keys on all the attributes. And then I turned off the influence. But what you can do is let's go ahead and delete all this animation. So instead of going through all those extra clicks, what we can do instead is if we want the gun to be unconstrained from the hand, let's say we want Max to throw guns out of his hand right here. If we turn off the influence, the gun's gonna go in its own direction. And that's not what we want. We wanna keep it in the same position. What we can do instead is press this X right here, set keys on these attributes, and now it's set a key on influence as well. Now it's zeroed out, and it's in the exact same position. And the hand no, has no control over it now. We go one frame beforehand, the hand still controls it. So that saves a lot of clicks. So thank you Everton for that tip. And I hope you guys all learned from that as well. And with that out of the way, let's actually check out Dynamic Parent. So I put the download link in the description for you guys. It's a little complicated because you have to find the latest version in this forum. Um, but I went ahead and just put the latest version in the description. So once you click it, it'll just automatically download the latest version. If it happens to not work and maybe we're a few iterations of blender ahead when you're watching this video then you can go check out the forum link that i also shared and find the latest version yourself and download that instead the creator seems to be very active and is constantly updating the add-on and i should probably note that the add-on is actually free so you don't have to pay anything so once you've gone ahead and actually installed the add-on and turned it on by pressing the check mark here you'll be presented with a very, very basic and simple UI. And I think that's the whole point. Um, the whole point of the add-on is to simplify the constraining process. In this example, I want to constrain the two animate ball rig to Max's hand and unconstrain it when Max throws it and then constrain it to this hand once this hand catches it. And so it's a lot of constraining and unconstraining the same same object. Um, we actually got a few comments on that in the last video as well. And so I'm addressing your comments. So keep them coming. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I want to do is make sure both of my objects that I want to constrain are in pose mode. I'm going to go ahead and click on the parent first and then click on the child, which is the ball rig. Press create. And now the ball should be following the hand. Cool. So now how do you unconstrain it? Well, that's easy. Let's say the ball gets let go here and I'm going to press disable. And guess what? In the next frame, the ball's in the ex exact same position and now it's just not constrained anymore. <laughs> so what happens next? Let's animate this ball. And where does it, let's say, Okay, so five frames later, again, the timing on this might be off. I'm just trying to show an example. So let's go ahead and say, oh, the ball is now here. Cool. So again, let's press on the parent, which is the hand, press on the child, press create. And now the ball is constrained to the other hand. So let's play this and let's see what it looks like. There you go. Literally easy as that. That's crazy. It was, <laughs> that was like three clicks. Are you kidding me? Listen, I wasn't expecting this video to be this short. So <laughs> let's go ahead and see how it works when we're constraining two hands together. So Ramaz Mahdi seems to have a situation where he's trying to constrain a character's hand to another character's hand and everything's just blowing up. So let's see how this plugin does in that scenario. 
Okay, so same thing. Let's make sure both rigs are actually in pose mode. Let's go ahead and say that this hand will be the parent and this hand will be the child. And you know, right, right now they're actually not constrained at all, right? This hand doesn't control anything. So let's go ahead and again, parent, child, press create. And now we go ahead and the hands are constrained together. Well, Max is controlling May's hand. And you know, I'm not gonna show you guys May just yet. Uh, we will be doing a little teaser video of her soon. Uh, the cool thing is that you can still move May's hand but Max's hand still controls May's hand. So you can still adjust the hand while it's still constrained to Max's hand. That is pretty darn cool, I'm not gonna lie. And if you enjoy tutorials like this and would like a lot more in-depth tutorials in the extensive Blender animation course that we're making, um, you can check out more information at 2animate.ca. In the animation course package, we'll be providing all the rigs you guys saw and more, much more, and sets, and voice clips, and everything you would possibly need to make a demo reel, um, on top of lessons, of course. So if that interests you, if that piques your interest, make sure to go to 2anime.ca and check out what we'll be launching on Kickstarter in November. Keep in touch. With that, happy animating and I will see you guys in the next video.